So, hello everybody. Do you know that feeling when you walk in the forest and the low light shines through the leaves? And maybe a deer or a rabbit will cross your path and you feel that this is such a wonder. Nature is so beautiful, complex and phenomenal. We humans can never dream to create something like nature. And the world evolved over 4 billion years ago, and we humans just over 200,000 years ago. Now, and as a kid, I was devastated to hear that we are destroying our living environment at a really fast pace. And I hoped that if I would grow up, I would be able to do something about it. And then I grew up. Uh, priorities shift a bit, you know, you start to think in terms of being productive, making money. And then you also start to realize the magnitude of environmental problems. We all know these graphs, right? CO2 emissions, steep increase. Biodiversity loss, steep increase. Freshwater supply, steep decrease. This is serious. And we feel powerless as an individual. We think, what difference can I actually make? And we hope other people will fix it. We hope entrepreneurs come and rescue us with their electric cars, CO2 capturing machines. We all start to re consume responsibly. But if we're honest with ourselves, if we look at the graphs, we're not steering quickly enough into the right direction. Where is the positive impact? Now, three years ago, I started working in artificial intelligence. And my job was finding new markets. And what struck me most is that we have all these amazing technologies at our disposal, and we could use them to solve these problems. However, we're mainly using them to sell more stuff. Now, we are at a historical crossroads. Today, we have the technology to monitor and analyze the environment at a massive scale. We have the technology to unite us all. But we have to decide to build a society that does not only listens to the laws of economics, but also to the laws of nature. Being able to live here on this planet should be our number one priority. You know what humans learn to be good at? Building companies. Sometimes our Earth feels like background noise. Birds, wind. But what if we see the Earth as our company? We are running it, all of us. Let's call it the Earth Corporation. Now, what are the key elements of running a successful business? First of all, you need a good product or a service to sell. So what do we, have we got here? An Earth to stand on, fresh air to breathe, water, food, entertainment and wonder, shelter in the endlessness of the universe. Sounds good, right? But this is something entrepreneurs love. Products we can't live without. So what else do we need? We need a clear vision and a mission. Now, that's lacking. And we need a good management team. And we have some really good managers here on the Earth Corporation, but also quite some corrupt ones. And they're not aligned. It seems that the managers are all running their own departments. We are all responsible for the company resources, and that brings us to a collective action problem. Now, let me illustrate that. Say, we have a lake, and people live around the lake, and everybody owns the lake. Now, the lake is polluted, because if nobody's watching, people tend to pee in the lake. Now, the problem isn't solved, as everybody is um, acting out of self-interest, and nobody wants to pay for their sewage if other people still pee in the lake. And actually, some people become very rich and powerful by peeing in the lake, and they set up a very powerful network, the People Peeing in the Lake Club. Now, if I was the CEO of the Earth Corporation, I would say, 
this. You should stop right now. People should stop being in the lake. But where's now CEO? So what's the problem here? Our Earth Corporation has a great product. We don't really know, though, what's going on, who's peeing in the lake. We don't have the data, we don't have the knowledge, we don't have a clear vision. We are heading towards bankruptcy. Our company is a mess. But today, we can turn the tide. Because maybe we feel powerless sometimes, as an individual. But our company has eight billion shareholders. All of you are shareholders. We share the same goal, an Earth suited for human living. Those that want to succeed in that far outnumber those that help us do bankruptcy. We need to change power structures from bottom up. We need bottom-up change. Technology enables to do so. Technology enables us to give us this power. So, to fix our Earth Corporation, we need to turn it into a tech company. Um, I'll show you how it works with the lake. Let's put water quality sensors in the lake and a movement sensor on the path to the lake. Now we know who's peeing in the lake and we can track back individual actions to global problems and put a number on that. So now we can say to those peeing in the lake, hey, you're actually responsible for my loss of profit. Now I have a vision with you to share, and I know it sounds pretty crazy. I want to embody the planet with a technological brain, and I call it planet brain. So what is it? It's a massive and a database about everything that's going on on the planet environmentally. So we can find patterns, for example, pollution patterns. How does it fix the Earth Corporation? Well, first of all, we can find patterns. We will know who's being in the lake. It gives us the power and the knowledge to take action and hold people accountable. We can track back individual actions to a global problem. But most importantly, it aligns us, because we're all shareholders. The da the, this database, the Planet Brain, will support the good managers, but those that are not aligned to our company goal, the corp managers, finally need to change. They can't get away with the yearly manipulated sustainability report, as our Planet Brain is a real-time sustainability report of everything. Now, it since um, not listening to the laws of nature poses an economic risk, we need to correct economic law with those, by integrating those of nature. And as the Earth Corporation now, all you guys together, is a data-driven and powerful corporate, we can lobby for better policy, just like those being in the lake do. Now, this might sound to you, this is way out of my league. But I'll tell you why this is possible right now, whereas it couldn't before. And that is, only recently, technology has advanced in three major fields. That is data collection, data analysis, and data storage. Let me start with data collection. 90% of all the world's data has been generated over the last two years. Now let that sink in for a moment. Social media data, search engine data, satellites covering the entire Earth's surface. And there's more to come. The next decade will be the decade of the Internet of Things. Normal objects will all of a sudden be connected to the web and continuously monitor the environment with a sensor or camera. Our world will be flushed with it. Now, all this data is currently mo mainly uh, generated by, collected by companies. And I have no doubt many of them will do great things with that. However, to serve our Earth Corporation purpose, we need to collect data and create good quality data sets ourselves. 
So we have the power over the data we are generating. So you can help. You can put an air quality sensor on your bike and collect data about the air pollution in your city, or put it on your company boat, or you can take a photo of illegal plastic dumps and upload the photos with, uh, and labeling them with what you see. So now when you're doing that, you're not only a shareholder, but you're also an employee and a manager of the planet brain. Now there is a reason why all this information is collected right now. And that is because only now technology has advanced in data analysis. Right now, data can be analyzed by machines or by algorithms, whatever you want to call it. And it's, so if you're afraid of artificial intelligence, you, yeah, you have the right to do so because AI will be just as smart as you, but it will be less costly and highly scalable. But a scalable, cheap labor force is good news if it serves our common good, if it serves our Earth Corporation. Because the Earth Corporation can have billions of tireless employees. So AI is a very broad term. Let me explain a little bit what it is. So specifically, machine learning can find patterns in big piles of data. Text, numbers, spoken language, doesn't really matter. But the closest we can come to AI is called deep learning, or convolutional neural networks. And it has, data, it has images as data input. So right now, it enables computers to see as well as humans can see. It enables computers to learn the way humans learn. I'll tell you a bit how it works. So if you can make the distinction between an image of a river polluted with plastics and a non-polluted river, you can feed a computer thousands of images with polluted rivers and non-polluted rivers. And without telling the computer what it is in the image that makes that it's classified as a river polluted with plastic, the computer finds out itself. Now what can we do with this? We can analyze satellite images and in real time find out where plastic is dumped in the rivers. Or we can detect in real time what urban change, how urban areas change, or animal migration patterns. And now, as an employee or manager of the Planet Brain, you might think, what can I do with this? But you can train an algorithm with your knowledge. And then we can scale this algorithm, and we can make it work for the planet brain 24-7. So there is one big risk by creating the planet brain, and that is knowledge can be used for both good and bad. So we need to make sure that all the data that's uploaded cannot be altered. We need to know who's uploading the information. We need to know who's training the algorithms, as algorithms are as biased as the humans who train them. For this, we could use the blockchain. The blockchain is a decentralized way of storing data. It cannot be altered. And it offers something else. In the future, it will make supply chains more transparent. So you can instantly see where the products you're buying are made. So these three advantages in technologies could be our Web 3.0. Together, we can build it and serve it and let it serve our goals. I'm not asking you to stop doing what you're doing. I'm asking you to change your perspective on what you are. Because your identity is not only related to the job you're currently doing. It is also related to the job you're doing for the planet brain, as a manager, as an employee, and as a shareholder. Together, we can make a difference. I'm asking you to do that little bit more to create building the planet brain and fix the Earth Corporation. And finally, your two jobs 
one for the economy and one for the planet, should be aligned. Now, this might be the cheapest option available for the most expensive problem in the world. An Earth unsuited for human living. Um, you might be wondering, who will be the CEO? Maybe this guy? Or it? Who knows? I don't hold the answers. We have to figure it out together. So, is this a dream too big, impossible to achieve? Leveraging technologies at this scale is already happening. Elon Musk wants to bring humans to Mars. Google captures images of all the streets in the world. Certainly, we can use technology to unite us all and to join forces to let humanity live here for at least another 200,000 years. Because joining forces is our biggest chance of survival. Now, if I ever have a kid, I'll take her to the forest. And I want her to find a forest full of wonder, and not an empty one. I don't want her to grow up with a feeling of disappointment and despair. I want her to, to grow up and be able to choose her role to play in the economy. Maybe as a singer, as an entrepreneur, as a scientist, maybe. But I also want her to choose the role she wants to play in the Earth Corporation. Maybe she will collect data, maybe she will create algorithms, maybe she will write better policy. I want her to grow up and feel empowered to be able to make a difference, to have a planet suited for human living. What a wonderful future would that be? Thank you. Yeah.